I can see many engineering students here and many professionals also. And as you embark into your careers, maybe this kind of an idea may be a fruitful one for you. And uh, so I chose to spoke about this. All along our uh, studies and our professional curricula, we come across a lot of exams, a lot of theory part, and a lot of uh, things that go on during our curriculums. But we hardly think of what is going to happen when we reach the point that we start our practice. We really don't know what happens on the other side of the story. And that is what I'm going to talk about. So let, let us first start with architecture first. Because I'll be speaking about my idea pertaining to architecture and construction since I come from that field. But uh, I guess that these, this idea will be fruitful and useful to any and every discipline that each one of you belong to. So let us start with architecture first. What is architecture? Architecture, as you all know, is an art, art of designing buildings, spaces, structures, and their environs. It is all about the planning and uh, taking judicious decisions about uh, what to choose from an array of things that are available to you. It also means that uh, you have to have a lot of parameters. The designer has a lot of parameters in front of him which he has to take into account while designing any kind of a structure. Let it be a very small structure to a large building. So what are these parameters? These parameters are such as uh, site constraints posed by the site, the advantages posed by the site, then the user, which is the most important element of the design, his psychology, which is also very important, then the utility and the function that you expect out of any structure or a building, the building has to serve you something. It has to give you some output in terms of how you are going to use the building. Then comes the form and aesthetics, the art part of architecture. And then the materials that you're going to use. We have an array of materials, as you all know, modern day materials. And last but not the least, the technology, which is going to make all these dream designs become a reality. So this part of the story I'm going to stress more today because we all know about designs and the uh, theory part of what we learn in colleges. So let us imagine to start with a very young and fresh architect who's just passed out of college. He's very young, he's very dashing, he's full of ideas and he's very enthusiastic and he wants to start his work. So what happens after that? He starts his work and goes to the site of works. I was in a similar condition when I started my work some 18 years back. I was very enthusiastic and very happy that I was doing something that was going to get executed as a reality. My dream design was going to come true. So here we have a very uh, inst instinct uh, part of human uh, nature, of human psychology, which is the joy of creation. And I was very happy about it. So I went to the site, very enthusiastic, very keen to do my work. And there I was posed with a lot of questions now. What sort of questions were they? I was asked about the correctness of various procedures that were going on on the site. These procedures included concreting. I was asked whether the mix was right. I was asked that these bricks have come to the site. Yes, OK, but they're looking very brittle to me. Are you sure? Are, they, are we really going to use them? So I was posed with innumerable questions of this kind to which I really had very half-hearted answers, to be very honest. I was totally shocked and surprised at the kind of questions that came upon me, and I really had no good answers to them. My knowledge was half-hearted, I felt, and a lack of in-depth knowledge was faced by me. So the where was the problem? The problem was multifold, of course. But what was the crux of the problem? Had I not learned my technology in college? The answer was yes, I had. Then had I not done my graduation? Yes, I had. So where was the problem? Where was the issue then? The whole issue was that the skill set that was required by me in college to pass the exams or to learn the technology, maybe by heart also, was not sufficient today. An entirely different skill set was required now, was demanded out of me when I started my work, and I really stood on the site as a responsible architect who had done that design. Now, this was the problem now. So, my condition was like a person, a young person who was given a motorbike to ride, the latest in the market maybe, 
and who knew nothing about riding a vehicle, who had never driven a single vehicle on the road. So maybe to help such a person, I give a manual, step-by-step -step guide that, okay, take this manual, this has one, two, three, four, five steps, read in that and go to the road and start driving your vehicle. Will you be able to drive it? What is your judgment? Will you be able to do this work? The answer is a big no. So similarly, in construction, this was happening that I could not answer these questions. So it was something like this. It was a gap, a huge gap, which was faced by uh, not me. I would say it is faced by all of us when we start our work. So this was a gap between the theory and the practice that was so relevant and so big. Then there were multifold problems. As we already discussed, technology which was studied in college and now what was expected. Then there were future hurdles in execution that if I send my drawings to the site, then there would be some future changes to those drawings because they are not suitable for certain amount of execution that is going to take place. So a lack of vision was experienced by me or maybe all of us who enter the field. So lack of vision, a very common day-to-day -day example would be the roads in Pune city. We all know that today we have concreted a few hundred kilometers of roads in the city. And now we are going to again dig them up. Why? To lay the much-awaited 24 by 7 water pipeline that we so desperately want. Again, after some days, what will happen is we'll have some gas pipeline and so on and so forth. So this is about the lack of vision that we had. Then uh, we didn't know what was the latest in market technology, which was the latest, and we were using something else. Then the do's and don'ts of any process are not known to a new person who enters the field. And we also don't know what is good and what is bad. Seemingly, two plastered surfaces are given to me, and I am asked to comment on it. They ask me, Madam, please tell us whether the work going on is right or not. How am I to tell it? I have no answers to this because the kind of process that has been followed or the kind of materials that have gone into it are not known to me. What should be called good and what should be called bad? I do not have definite definitions to say that if concrete is posed in front of me and it has certain few little cracks, then it is okay. But if it is, has a big crack, then it is not so. That knowledge was lacking in Every, it, it lags with everybody who starts his work, not just me. My, so this is like if I give you one real diamond and if I give you an artificial diamond and ask you to differentiate between the two. I feel only a very seasoned jeweler who has a lot of experience and who is trained in that fashion will be only able to distinguish between the two. So with this, all these innumerable problems and all this um, in front of me, I had two options then. One was to quit the scene, say goodbye, this is not my problem. Okay, forget about it, I'm not doing work. Or to relearn the technology now, but now from a different perspective. So I definitely chose path number two and embarked on a journey of self-learning, of self-education, wherein I went to the sites of works, studied the technology there, now from a different perspective, and went back to the books, came back to the site again. This process went on for a long time till I met my guru, who was 80 years old when I met him, 80, with a profound experience of 50 years in civil engineering. He was a real knowledgeable person, and I was extremely fortunate to learn from him. So what's the idea now? The idea is to, if civil engineers and or architects or any professionals are taught construction technology or any technology which is your domain on the site with a hands-on experience of everything on the site, then they will emerge as much better professionals. So it is about bridging the gap between the academics and the practice, but with a way of not just somebody coming and scolding you about something that you have done wrong, but by teaching you with your own hands on the site. So this is about that. The idea is to create a vision in the minds of young professionals so that they start understanding the hurdles that can be faced at a later date 
when their project goes for execution. What will happen when we start teaching youngsters this kind of vision? The outcome will be that uh, they will be able to differentiate as to what should be drawn on the paper and what should not be drawn. Certain things do change when they go for execution. And if you have a knowledge of that at the first day itself, then your design on the board or the computer will make the necessary changes there itself. And 11th hour changes, which cost a lot in terms of time, money, are avoided. 11th hour changes also have another aspect to it that uh, your execution is not a single man's process. It is a group activity. And when you change your design to a certain extent, then all other agencies which are dependent upon you also have to change, leading to a lot of inconvenience and irritation as the psychological byproducts of the process. So having said this, let us start envisaging the future day troubles and start revising our designs and get to the entire picture of the story and not just your desk and your work. Now there are an array, array of technologies that are available in the market. A lot of latest technologies which make high-tech buildings that you see of today. So an architect, if he knows the number of uh, technologies that are available and so many things, he can pick and choose the apt technology for the apt purpose. A good example of this is the latest high-tech buildings that we all see. They are not buildings, mind you. I think they are machines. Why do I call them machines? Because they are fitted with so many, they are inbuilt so many processes of mechanical, electrical, automation, automated types of technologies that are already built into them that these buildings have, mind you, started looking and behaving like machines, catering to modern day needs of man. So, an understanding of all these technologies is a must for any designer so that he starts designing, taking into account all, all of them. Then we come to the point of small, very small details of any process. Take any engineering uh, activity. There is one process which is a big process and there are small little nitty gritties and small little details that accompany every process. If something goes wrong in those small uh, details, then the entire process gets hampered and the quality is hampered. But if you pay attention to these small precautions and small processes, then you get end up getting an excellent quality product. A good day-to-day -day example is of cooking. Supposing I give each one of you the same ingredients to cook a bhaji, that is a vegetable, Indian staple food, and each one of you has to cook the same bhaji, still I am sure that each one of you will come out with a different taste. Why does this happen? Because the kind of vegetable you cut, the amount of oil that you use, the spices that you use, whether you stir fry it or you pour water to cook it, process, all this matters. All this matters to a large extent in giving the final product that is the taste. Similarly, in construction, small little details do matter a lot. Small little details of uh, procedures, of materials, of how to do it, the man's psychology who is doing it, everything matters to give you the correct quality of construction that happens ultimately. Suppose I'm doing a line of columns and I take all the necessary precautions and then uh, everything is well worked out. Then the kind of labor, extra labor that may be required in such a situation is just maybe one person who is required extra to take care of all these precautions. But if I have to repair a bad work, then maybe four or five people will be required and a lot of time and as well as money will be wasted in doing this repair work. So as they say, do first things right at the first shot and then you get excellent quality, you don't have to repair it. The last is the judgment about good and bad quality construction. We have structures of this kind everywhere which are about 80 years old or more than 80 years old. So what kind of technology has gone into making these structures? What kind of uh, efforts have we gone into making these structures have to be studied. So a judgment about good and valid, bad quality can be established. Every line drawn on the paper means a reality for the architect on the site. The reality is with all its nitty gritties of good as well as bad, good as well as bad qualities. And a client has to live with that for his entire life. So. Whatever the architect does is of a very highly responsible role because 
whatever you create, the client has to stay in that space for his entire life. Now a question could be asked to me that, am I going to create engineers out of architects or vice versa? The answer is no, because I want a common platform for engineers as well as architects where they can have a conceptual understanding of both the fields put together so that we can come up with very good buildings which are viable, feasible and cost, uh, cost effective also. So how do I implement this idea now? The very logical answer to this is an actual hand-on site experience, hands-on experience, on-site training. So it's an open classroom kind of a concept where there are no walls, no exams, no pre exams also, entrance exams. The only prerequisite to do all this is to have a good uh, passion to do excellent work. So brickwork can be taught this way, concrete mixing is taught this way, concreting and curing is again taught in this fashion, plumbing which is so very important is taught in this manner, you actually get to see what is happening. And then there is another way to teach this kind of a methodology. First, we can find a number of errors that happen in any kind of a process, the commonly committed errors, then find out ways to avoid these errors and find out ways to repair them in case they occur. So by doing all this, what is the outcome of the whole idea that the gap which we saw previously is, we, is bridged People who have already gone, undergone such kind of trainings find a lot of difference in themselves. So when I say that, it's an intangible benefit. And tangible benefits can be a loss, a saving of time, money, and a contribution to the industry. A lot of inconvenience also can be avoided. So having said this, I may not have trained hundreds and thousands of people, but whatever I have done, I have done right from the bottom of my heart. I have stuck to my idea through thick and thin. I have tried to bridge the gap and I have done my very level best. Thank you very much for being such a patient audience. Thank you. Namaste. Guys, give a big round of applause, please. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful talk.